Welcome to our first episode from Chapter 5. Chapter 5 is over populations, and specifically, what are the things in the environment that affect how populations grow. Now, this is going to be one of the more difficult of our four ecology chapters, so make sure you really pay attention to these episodes and make sure you do a good job of writing down your notes. All right. In this first episode, we're going to look at the characteristics of populations. But before we get into what are how the characteristics of populations are, we need a definition of a population. And we've had this before. It's simply a group of individuals of the same species that live in the same area. So as you look down here in this picture, this is a population of uh, zebras. And they're on their migration and they're, they're crossing a water. And probably this body, this body of water is, is filled with crocodiles. So somewhere in here, you would have a population of crocodiles who are trying to eat the zebras. Okay, predation. We had that on a previous series of screencasts. All right, let's move on to the next one. There are four characteristics of populations, and two of them you're going to see here on the screen. One of them is the geographic distribution, which we will refer to as range from here on out. This is the area inhabited by a population. All right, I want you to zoom in here onto this picture. Uh, there's three types of zebras that you're going to find in Africa. Uh, one species, their range is the, um, the western part of Africa over here. Another species gets the... Uh, eastern part, the southeastern part, and then another species, Grant's zebra, uh, probably one of the more common ones that you'll see. Uh, this one is gets the uh, central eastern part of Africa. So these three different species of zebra, they have their own distribution or range. All right? The second characteristic of a population is its density. Density is defined as the number of individuals per unit area. So make sure you take a note of that. Now, usually it's described as random, uniform, or clumped. In other words, they're just kind of randomly spread out around an area. Uniform, they're evenly spread out, like you'll find one every two acres or so. Or they could be clumped. And humans have a tendency to be clumped. All right, so this is a picture of the eastern part of the United States. And let's try a different color so this will show up better. Let's go with blue. As you can see, this little spike right here, that's Fort Wayne where we live in. But notice there's vast areas of the uh, eastern part of the United States where hardly anybody anybody lives. But you'll notice the, the megalopolis from, let's say, pretty much Washington all the way up to Boston is one great city. And obviously this one right here, that's New York City. And then over here we have Chicago which is also another one of America's great cities, and that would be all the areas around Chicago. So as you can see here, humans have a tendency to be clumped. They're very dense in certain parts of the, uh, of the area. Now, if this was, picture was to expand to the rest of the United States, you'd notice hardly anybody lives east of the Mississippi. Uh, I'm sorry, hardly anybody lives west of the Mississippi with the ex um, uh, exceptions of the, the West Coast. Uh, especially the west coast of California, and the great uh, cities in the west, Denver, Salt Lake, Phoenix, um, the big cities in Texas, uh, St. Louis, and then obviously like Las Vegas. Um, outside of that, nobody really lives. And so uh, much more people live in the eastern part of the United States than in the western part. All right, the last two characteristics are the growth rate, Growth rate is equal to the birth, birth rate plus the death rate. Now, remember, the death rate is going to be a negative number, and that's going to be your growth rate. So if your growth rate has a positive number, the birth rate is higher than the death rate. If the growth rate is negative, therefore, the death rate is higher than the birth rate. Oh. That should be basic math. Duh. Okay, age structure. This is a really important concept. It's probably one that you've not thought of very much. So let's add some, some effort into this one. Okay, an age structure shows the number of individuals at certain age categories or age groups. Okay, and an age structure diagram is going to look like what you see down here. Okay, so let's look at France. At this 0 to 5 range, um, you have so many females and you have so many males. Um, when you get it to the 40 to 45 range, for some reason, they have a lot less than they do of these um, 
younger groups, and then they kind of recover at these higher ones, all right? So what this is showing you here is a population that's pretty stable. Uh, it's not really growing. Now over here we have India. They have lots of individuals at these lower age categories as compared to older ones, which means uh, when these guys reach the age where they can reproduce, there's going to be tons and tons of babies. What's going on here is at these regular age group, we essentially just have replacements. So as these older individuals pass away, they're just being replaced by babies. So for every two people that are born, two people die, and that keeps a stable population. What's happening over here is as we have two people die, 10 are being born. That's why we have so many of these individuals at these lower ones, all right? So France would be considered a stable or possibly shrinking population, and where India has a high growth rate because it has tons of young people. So lots of babies, uh, much more babies. So in other words, a higher birth rate than death rate. Here in France, birth rate, death rate are essentially the same. All right, so we've got all these key ideas. And especially I want you to remember that um, the growth rate is affected by these three factors, and they're actually right here. So in your notes, make a note of this. Put a little star right there, star here, and a star there, and then circle these key ideas. All right, so birth rate, uh, uh, BR for short, uh, higher the birth rate, the higher the growth rate. Death rate, the higher the death rate, the slower the growth rate. And then we also have this immigration and emigration. Now, in the United States, uh, our growth is mainly coming from immigration. Now, in other parts of the world, they're shrinking because people are moving away. That's emigration. All right, so pay attention to these key concepts. If your birth rate is greater than the death rate, your population is going to grow. If your birth rate is less than your death rate, then the population is going to shrink. Okay? And when it comes to immigration and emigration, we have the kind of the same concept. If your immigration is greater than your emigration, that population can grow. And that's what's happening in the United States right now. If your immigration is greater than your is less than your emigration, then your population can shrink. And we're seeing that in some of these um, uh, countries where there's say there's a civil war and we have a lot of refugees leaving the country. In other words, we have a high rate of immigration. That's going to cause that population to shrink. All right, very important concepts on this page, so make sure you understand that. So until the next time, we're going to catch you on that flip side.